There's a truth that I keep hearing people say, you can create using any camera. And for the most part, I do agree. I myself have been blown away by the kind of results that people have been getting by just using their iPhones. That's not even considering the recently released iPhone 12 Pro Max, and I'm sure there's gonna be some insane results to come from that. But if you want people to actually consume what you create, and in that way compete with the rest of what's out there, you're going to need gear that can elevate your production quality. So I recently upgraded to Fujifilm's 2020 release, the X-T4. I'm Chad and welcome to my three month review. I feel like the pressure has kind of been building for this video. I've been releasing a few videos shot on my new camera without addressing the fact that I have a new camera. But this is not without reason. I've been holding off on creating this video because I wanted to gather my thoughts a bit. Get out there and actually use it extensively. Now I'm the guy who watched hundreds of videos before I actually bought it. I really wanted to like it. But if I'm honest with myself and with you guys, I really took a little bit of a leap because I wasn't actually blown away with the kind of results that other people were posting. And that's when the reality hit me. Filmmaking is about a whole lot more than just pointing your camera at something and expecting good results. And for some reason, that's all a lot of reviewers out there were doing. So in this video, you're not only going to see unedited, ungraded footage, because I want to show you what you can actually do with this camera, if you put in a little bit of work. Let's start off by going through my favorite features of the X-T4. 4K 60 10-bit HLG. Now, that's quite a mouthful and a few little things to unpack over there. Of course, these features are not unique to the X-T4, the X-T3 had them as well, but let's go through each of them. 4K 60, so I have always gravitated towards slow motion footage. There's nothing quite like a cinematic B-roll sequence with slow-mo footage, and I've typically been limited to full HD at about 120 frames per second. Being able to elevate my slow motion footage to 4K, even though it's only at 60 frames per second in my mind has made a significant improvement to the results of my videos. Then we talk about 10-bit. Of course this just means a whole lot more colors. Bigger files of course but the results are truly amazing. And lastly HLG. This is kind of a middle ground between F-Log and the Eterna color profile that you find in Fuji bodies and for me it's been a much more accessible way to grade your footage and get that dynamic range that you really want without all of the hassle that comes with using F-Log. Next up, in-body image stabilization or IBIS as everyone calls it. Now IBIS is not a gimbal, so do not expect it to be that. But what it is, is a fantastic mechanism within the camera that lets you get really smooth, steady, handheld, still type shots, as if you were using a tripod. When it comes to panning or doing walking shots or anything like that, I personally wouldn't recommend using it with IBIS, I'd rather use a gimbal. But in terms of just getting steady shots when you're just standing steady looking at a subject, I think it's been really useful and for me it's made a big difference, especially when using my prime lenses that don't have any optical stabilization within them. Dual cards. Now if you asked me before, I would have said, who the heck needs dual cards? You can just keep replacing the memory cards, depending of course on how big they are, you can just upgrade the size of the card. But I've really loved using the dual cards, especially when shooting portrait photo shoots, to be able to have a backup of my photos onto the second card, and of course not having to change the memory card as often, because there are two in the body. Then there's the flip screen. Now this is quite a polarizing feature, you'll find a lot of people don't actually like it, but for me it works really well, especially with my YouTube videos, because I can see myself, I can see the composition, make sure I'm in focus, adjust the lighting, do all of those good things. And I also think it works really well on a gimbal, because you're able to actually tilt it out and adjust the angle. For me, it's a no-brainer. Then we move on to the battery life. 
Now the X-T4 has an incredible battery. In most cases, one battery gets me through a full day of shooting and I've really not ever had to change it. That said, I always carry a spare handy and that's maybe a habit that I got into with my X-T30 because those tiny little batteries, you honestly needed a couple with you to get through a full day of shooting. Luckily, that's no longer a problem. And for me as a feature on its own, that's a really, really strong sell on the X-T4. Now let's talk about the body. Now the body can be quite personal to your taste, depending on the size of your hands and of course how you like your body to feel. But for me, I've felt a whole lot more grip since getting the X-T4. I like the fact that it's bigger and a little bit more bulky, a little bit heavier. It actually makes it a little bit more steady and stable for me when I'm shooting handheld. And of course the Ibis helps with that too. But nevertheless, I really do like this body. It's not significantly bigger than my X-T30. I'm gonna be keeping the X-T30 because of course it's such a great little travel camera but I love the size of the body for the X-T4 especially for professional type applications. You rock up to a photo shoot with one of these and people know you mean business. Next up the newly designed shutter. Now the shutter is so quiet and you might like that or you might not but for me I've found it to be a really handy addition. I don't want to be taking photos of people and have this obtrusive noise in the background. I'd much much rather the subtle soft sounds that you get from the X-T4 and I'll quickly play you an example of the difference between the X-T30 shutter and the X-T4. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about Fuji's colors. Now, color science is a very personal topic and everyone is going to gravitate naturally towards the manufacturer of their choice. But Fuji's colors are undeniably amazing. There is just something vintage almost about it. I guess it's from the film background. They've got such amazing film simulations and I've loved using the colors that come out of the X-T4. A lot of people love Sony, other people love Canon. It really depends on you, but ultimately if you like the results that I'm about to show you, maybe Fuji is for you. Now let me show you some demo footage that I shot in 4K.
I've been blown away by the results of this camera. I'll be out and about busy snapping away, having a look at the back of the screen and have a fairly good idea of what it is that I've just shot. But always when I come home and import the footage and start looking through the footage, I have this wow moment that hits me every single time. I cannot believe how good the footage looks in its full resolution, full colors. It's really impressive. One thing I have to touch on here is how you actually edit the HEVC files that come out of this beast. Now, like I've said before, you can shoot in 10 bit 4K up to a rate of 400 megabits per second. And as you can imagine, the files are huge and really hard to edit. So if your workflow doesn't allow for proxy file rendering, I'd strongly consider whether this camera is actually for you. I know it sounds easy enough to use proxy footage all the time, but let's be honest with ourselves, it's a hack. So definitely do think it through. Now let's move on to the images. I've been lucky enough to squeeze in a few photo shoots since buying the X-T4, which is quite a feat because in London we've been bouncing from one lockdown to another, so I was glad to have got those in. I bought the camera in the 16 to 80 millimeter combo, and if I'm honest with myself, I haven't been blown away by this zoom lens for still applications. I do admit that it's exceptional for video, but for stills, I still personally prefer what prime lenses can offer. My favorite lens for stills so far is the 35 mm f2, which I'm actually recording with right now. Beautiful for portraits and equally good at street and travel applications. I recommend it. Anyway, here are some shots. As I'm sure you've gathered by now, I absolutely love this camera. For the price, the level of capability that you get is astounding. Yes, it's an APS-C sensor and is thus cropped, and yes, Fujifilm does currently not have a full frame body to upgrade to at a later time, but I'm okay with that. With the lenses that Fujifilm currently have in their lineup, including the 50mm f1, I personally think the X-T4 will keep me going for a long time to come. If budget is a concern for you, I would strongly recommend you pick up the X-T3, which is on a massive discount now because of the X-T4, and just a few weeks ago, they released another firmware update for it, which basically brings the autofocus capabilities in line with the X-T4. Fujifilm, you guys are incredible. Of course, you're gonna also need to live without the IBIS, but like I said, IBIS is no gimbal replacement, so an X-T3 with a gimbal is gonna be just as good. And of course, you're gonna have to live without the flip out screen and the bigger battery as well. If you enjoyed this video at all, hit the like button down below. If you'd like to see any more of my Fujifilm creations in the future, of which of course there are going to be many, hit the subscribe button too. And lastly, if you'd like to get notified when I post a new video, hit that notification bell. See you in the next one.